Hey guys, and welcome back to a new video. In this video, I want to talk a little about the setup you actually need or should have as an Android developer. So setup in terms of which hardware is actually minimum required, which hardware is recommended to just have a smooth development experience as an Android developer. Because as an Android developer, we need quite good hardware because we usually run Android Studio, which is very resource heavy. And in addition to that, we also like to use the Android emulator, which is also very resource heavy. And we usually also want to have at least one instance of Google Chrome open so we can just Google for our issues. So that is what I understand of the minimum requirement that we can run all these three programs in parallel. So Android Studio, Google Chrome and Android emulator. The recommended setup goes a little beyond that so when I usually code, I have two instances of Android Studio open just to look up something in another project. I usually have many Chrome tabs open. Sometimes I have two emulators open. For example, now when I um, made, a, made an app with WebSockets, where I just needed to test this app with two devices because they communicate with each other. So that is what I understand of the recommended requirements. And I will structure this in six big categories. So on the one hand, we have the RAM, we have the, the processor, the hard drive slash SSD, we have the graphics card, we have the monitor, and we have the keyboard. So I want to talk about these six things because they make the most significant impact or they are actually those things you think about the first when you um, want to build a PC. So starting with RAM. Um, the RAM is extremely important for Android Studio. Um, it will basically determine if you have a smooth development experience. So if Android Studio lags, if the emulator lags, how many Google Chrome tabs you can open, how many Android Studio instances you can open, and so on. So I think the absolute minimum RAM you should have to have a somehow smooth development experience in Android Studio is eight gigabytes, but that is really not that much. This will be enough to run the Android emulator, but it won't be super smooth. So that is really the minimum RAM you should get. I rather recommend having at least 16 gigabytes of RAM. So that is what I have. I can run two or three instances of Android Studio. I can run up to three emulators and also Google Chrome open. But even I think about upgrading my RAM to um, 32 gigabytes of RAM because I also want to record stuff and yeah, I just need to do a little more. I need to have more programs open than just Android Studio Chrome and emulator. But the RAM is for sure one of the most significant factors that decides about how smooth your development experience is. So next up we have the processor slash CPU. The CPU will well, handle all the IDE functionality and the, the biggest performance advantage here you will probably see when you build your projects. So usually Android Studio projects take some time to build and a fast processor will just speed up that process and will just make you do more in less time. So in my opinion, the processor should be fine. It doesn't need to be a flagship or so. Um, but usually if you go with an Intel i5 or an AMD Ryzen, um, you're pretty good to go actually. But of course, the faster, the better. Um, it's all about what your budget is in the end. So I personally use an Intel i7, 7700K. And I bought it back then when it was a really good CPU. Um, I mainly bought it for gaming back then. So it only has four CPU cores, which I wouldn't recommend for um, all creative tasks for development. Um, it's good for games because they usually only support four cores, but these programs like Android Studio or well, Photoshop, these creative work programs, they usually support much more cores. And back then there were some problems with AMD CPUs and the Android emulator, but for quite some time you can also now use AMD in combination with the Android emulator. So if you like AMD, then the Ryzen 5 or Ryzen 7 series might be something for you. 
Then we have the hard drive slash SSD. Here we really don't need to talk long, just get an SSD, it's so worth it. It's probably one of the biggest performance advantages you will have um, in your whole PC experience, in your whole system, because it speeds up everything that has something to do with files. And on your PC, basically everything has something to do with files. So just get an SSD, it's worth it. Next up, we have the graphics card slash GPU. Um, if you are into making games, then it can make sense to get a graphics card. But if you just make normal apps, that is usually not required. You're not handling any graphic intense stuff if you just do normal apps and then the CPU power is totally enough. Of course, if you also want to play some games in addition to development, then you really need to think about a good graphics card. Now that we talked about the hardware inside of your computer, I also want to mention two pieces of hardware that you actually use outside of your computer. And that is on the one hand your monitor and on the other hand your keyboard. So first of all, the monitor. Well, of course, you need a monitor if you, has, if you have a desktop PC. But what I really want to suggest you is if you have some money left and you think about getting a CPU upgrade, getting a graphics card upgrade, then I would recommend to first think about getting a second monitor. In my experience, having a second monitor makes your whole development experience so much more comfortable because you can just have one project open on one screen and you just Google whatever you whatever issues you face on the other screen. You can have a second project open on the other screen and you can copy over stuff from your old projects. It just makes your development experience so much more comfortable to have two monitors. And the same counts for keyboards. If you have some money left, then really spend that for a good keyboard, a good mechanical keyboard. Because you as a programmer, you just type all the time. And of course, you need a good keyboard for that. You should feel comfortable while typing. And these mechanical keyboards just, they feel just so much better than these cheap um, $5 keyboards that also work, of course. And if you're on a budget, that is totally fine. But if you have some money left, get a mechanical one. It also is much more robust and it won't break that easily. So that is it, what I recommend for a setup for Android, to, uh, Android development. Of course, I can give you an exact setup here because there are tons of setups that work well, um, but just that you have an impression of what you should have to actually have a smooth development experience. If you like this video, then please give it a like, comment below, and also tell me what your setup is and if you're happy with that. Um, I would be really interested in that. And I wish you an awesome day. See you in the next video. Bye bye.